you know, for the text adventure games, the ones I tried out were relatively low on the it crashed style bug, at least that I can remember. I think that's probably due to they had the, the language processor and engine down pretty well. They'd shipped a couple of games underneath this engine uh, for a while. And uh, so I don't remember a whole lot of crashes. I think I'm sure there was a couple. And, uh, and plus, I, I tested this on a couple different platforms. Their engine ran on Apple IIs and IBMs and Commodores and things like that. And um, so I don't remember a whole lot of the you know horrible crash kind of bug. Type in a command, start seeing machine language, or your screen goes corrupt or anything like that. Uh, I do remember a couple of the, uh, you know, as you mentioned, going to a room, something disappears, or, you know, more, more likely, the more kind of nastier bug to actually track down, the one that probably is the, the more painful one for a QA person is the, oh, I screwed up something way back early in the game, and now I can't finish. You know, what happened to that object? Oh, I, you know, I destroyed it. I hit it with a hammer. I stabbed it with a sword. It's dead, and I need this now, you know, three hours later somewhere else in the game and I don't have this anymore. File a bug that says, yeah, I, I was able to destroy a critical game object. Make it so I can't do that. Right? One of my favorite favorite bugs that I remember fairly vividly uh, was around the, you know, typical uh, drink bottle kind of thing. Somewhere in, in the in the Deadly Summer game, there's a uh, kitchen table and uh, there's a, you know, bottle of water somewhere in, in the kitchen on the table or something like that. And te testing out the, the you know, slightly improved English language parsing of, of Better Than Zork, uh, most other games you would typically say something like drink bottle. And that was an oversimplification which would mean, would be, which would be understood to mean drink the water out of the bottle and now you have an empty bottle and you've drunk the water and you've shrunk or you died or you feel refreshed or something. In the Better Than Zork engine for the Deadly Summer game when I tried it, I did drink bottle rather than drink water from bottle, drink water in bottle. And the, uh, it said, you drank the bottle. But now the bottle's gone. I actually drank the bottle. So I said, thought to myself, huh, that, that seems wrong. And I started to file a bug in that. And I said, well, let me see what else I can drink. Drink table. I actually drank the table. Proceeded to drink a bunch of items in the room. I think I drank a chair and I was able to drink some stuff out of my inventory. Finally, I said, uh, drink me. And then I find myself in this empty room, and there's all my stuff. I had drunk myself, and there's where we were storing all the objects. So, bit of a bug. Uh, they went and limited what the drink command we could do at that point. But, you know, there's an example of, uh, of a, uh, a, a state bug, a parsing bug, something that, you know, not, not a programming bug in the traditional sense. Uh, you've got to limit the, uh, the plot and what you can do with your items. Yeah, I was told by Monte Schultz about um, they had a weight puzzle where you had to take pieces of things onto a scale, and by doing um, probably not. I'd have to go back and look at dates to see. Uh, and again, some of the ones that really stand out, and I mentioned it before, are things like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which I don't think I finished. Did get a Babel fish in my ear, but uh, don't think I finished that one. Uh, I did finish Enchanter. I remember that one in particular. And that may have been afterwards. I have to go back and look, but I can't remember playing a whole lot after that. Uh, that's not true. I think I did pick up some of the Zork sequels and play those guys a little bit. So, pretty sure that Zork 2 and 3 and those guys were significantly after that time period, and I'm pretty sure I played those. But, not a whole lot. I think that's a combination of um, probably more to do with it just became a uh, little bit of a dying market, uh, even, even that, that early. Uh, compared to a lot of other games. I mean, certainly, you know, your 8-bit computer graphics, not fantastic, but um, there was uh, definitely kind of a different camp there with the with the text adventure games. Um, and, of course, you know, I've, I've had this experience with some stuff that I've, that I've uh, tested where, you know, after you watch the sausage being made, you definitely don't want to, you know, go out and, and have a big plate of, you know, bratwurst or something like that necessarily. And so it's definitely easy to get burned out in a particular game. Not a big problem with Pete Rose Pinnet Fever. Couldn't have, couldn't have uh, stood it from day one anyway. But um, some of the other games, certainly, you know, once uh, once you've gone through them, you're not going to go play them again. Um, and I have to admit to probably a certain amount of frustration with the text adventures. This is back in the BBS days, and I and I ran one, and uh, and I can certainly remember in some cases tracking down a walkthrough to get through certain things. 
Uh, so when I say I got the Babel fish in my ear, I'm not sure that I did that on my own. I probably went and got a walkthrough for that one. So um, I can sometimes be a little impatient uh, with not, not being willing to spend the two, three hours to, to find the solution on my own uh, before I actually go and, and track down a hint. Okay. Yeah, I try to think about that in terms of stuff like, okay, you know, would I ever want to put my kids in front of a text adventure? Uh, well, I, I probably would, would like to, but would they play it? Um, thinking probably not. I, uh, I think the, uh, what happened there is that the graphical stuff, which has its own built-in appeal, uh, caught up with the ability to tell a story. Uh, you got 64K and you've got graphics, you have uh, very little room to tell a story. You don't have much more room than it takes to do you know, a level and then have level two just be the same one faster. Uh, it, was, it used to be an either or thing. So if you look at any of the modern games, um, the ones that tend to do a lot better are uh, ones with a story to them, a storyline that people can appreciate. Uh, my favorite example is the, the Half-Life games. Uh, tons of tons of first-person shooter games out there in the market. Why is Half-Life 2 dominating that arena? Uh, I think it's because they got, they've got a decent story to it. And really that's kind of the... Uh, uh, well, Text Adventure is pure, is, is pure story. It's pure essence. It's, it's an interactive book. Um, and I want, and I, it makes me wonder if... Uh, if there's any market left for those. So for, for example, uh, could you get kids interested in text adventures by sending up an instant message portal or something like that? Um, make, makes me wonder. But, uh, you know, the important, the important part about a text adventure w was always the story. Uh, so if you, have, you know, if you have some games where you've got, frankly, programmers doing the storyline and they don't succeed, even though it's got a good engine, uh, I think that probably had a lot to do with it. Okay. A little over the board, all over the board there, but... That's fine with me. All right. Uh, so I worked for Synapse starting when I was about 15, uh, which was created some interesting uh, work problems because I had to get permission with school, and that's the uh, first year when you can technically legally work, um, and I had to make sure that they had employment insurance and all that kind of thing. So I was 15 years old, and the way it happened was my mom worked at a restaurant. She uh, would do hostessing. Uh, she ran the banquets there. She did a little bookkeeping. And uh, one night at the bar, she ran into a guy. They got to talking. He said he worked for this game company. And she said, oh, you should meet my son. And, uh, and we did, and they, they ended up hiring me as a, as a game tester. Um, I had experience uh, assembling these machines. I was the kid who would maintain the computer labs at school. Uh, you know, could build, could build a box, put all the pieces together, that kind of thing. Um, and had played a lot of games where uh, I didn't have the manuals. So, uh, the way it worked for me is, uh, you know, depending where it's in the process, I played a couple of the Synapse games that were more or less about to ship, or had shipped to kind of get a feel for it. So, um, they had shipped a, uh, a couple of ones. I think the big one that they were known for was uh, Mind Wheel. And uh, I was working on a couple that uh, turned out never actually got shipped, from what I can tell, Deadly Summer and Ronin. So the deal would be you come in for the day, you're assigned usually a, a game or something for the day, hand you the day's floppy that they had built, and uh, you try it out. Now the game usually, uh, the, for the ones I play, they tended to have them so that they wrote the beginning parts of the game first, and so you actually have something to try out while they're off finishing the story and the engine and uh, figuring out the plot and all that kind of thing. So I got to play the beginning of these two games uh, quite a bit. And, uh, and of course, as is the, the bane of any of these kind of games, you still have it nowadays with patches sometimes, is that all your save games are completely useless by the time you get another build. What's up when they do it that way? So absolutely. A, you know, it's, uh, I guess in an ideal world that wouldn't be a factor, but absolutely, I'm the kid there. I'm the youngest one in the group. Uh, the other kids, compared to some of the adults who are, you know, running the company and things like that, were college-age kids, so, you know, 18, 19 or older. Um, so very much uh, got, got treated as a kid. You know, a little bit of talking down to a little bit of teasing, um, and yet I'm, I'm there doing the same job as them. So uh, I would be... Uh, 
try to be, so I got, you know, I got a little bit of trip treatment that was different in terms of spelling out very carefully what some of the procedures were. Here's how you write out a good bug. Um, you know, don't bother, don't bother the programmers. Don't be hanging around uh, out back all day long where the where the developers were. Um, and then one of the other things I would run into a lot, it's not not so a little bit with the treatment, is that uh, I'd you know get stuck somewhere in the plot in the game, and not usually a bug, but you don't know when you're playtesting. Could be a bug in the game, and you don't know if it's I haven't figured out the trick, I haven't figured out the puzzle or the game's broken at this point in the game. So typically I would have to, you know, bang on it for a little bit on my own, and then I have to go ask one of the other people, someone who's probably played the game before, uh, what do I do at this point in the game? And I would get a variety of responses from, you know, teasing down to uh, kind of hints and suggestions or sometimes encouragement to go look in a particular area or to just keep banging on it for a while. This was both a combination of um, you know, testing the thing out as well as this is a way that they use to see how hard is this, is this, is this plot element? How hard is this puzzle? Are we going to frustrate people um, by making them spend two hours trying to figure out that they have to, you know, move the brick to find the item that you need to pull it out and then you can open the door and, and uh, is this just something that's arbitrarily hard that's no fun? So I, you know, in that in that respect, I represented the uh, the young teenage demographic in terms of uh, clever kid uses computers a lot. How long does it take him to figure out this 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 trick here? So, so the sense that I got with the text adventures in particular was that um, their hook, their their thing that was better was the engine. They had a better parser essentially. They had uh, a little bit better natural language processing, although that's Bit of a stretch to use that term. Um, they were targeting the previous generation, which was the you know verb noun, get lamp, and uh, they would be able to do something a little more complicated than that. They would say you know get something from something. You could string together a series of actions, go east and then open the door, and so uh, that was how they were going to differentiate themselves. They'd had one game where they'd had a uh, you know fairly, relatively big name writer on. And then if you go back and look at some of these other games, uh, I'm not sure what changed there, whether or not they felt that they had the engine down and could expand on it and use it now, but uh, you had the programmers writing some of the plots for some of the games that I ended up playing, the ones that didn't actually ship. But definitely the point of pride there, the difference was the, uh, the engine, and they wanted some experience with that. And I, remember, I think when they had talked to me originally when they you know, was interviewing or when they were talking about putting me on the project, they wanted to know how I played these games before. Enchanter from Infocom. I think prior to this or around that time. So I was familiar with, you know, functionality and, and enjoyed them and could get through them and things like that. Um, and of course, if you go back and look at what Synapse named their engine, BTZ, better than Zork, it was fairly clear that they were targeting Infocom as the, uh, as the big player in that market. Um, I think they had planned a total of five titles before they ended up getting acquired by Broderbund, which, and Broderbund ended up killing the other titles except for the ones that had already shipped which they continue to distribute, but didn't really widely promote. I mean, or were they, were they not quite finished? <clears throat> Unfortunately, it's not real clear exactly how finished they were. Um, as a game tester for you know, a lot of these companies, uh, you know, through my teenage years, I worked for a number of game companies. I worked for Synapse, you know, 15 and 16. I worked briefly at Broderbund, uh, 17 and 18. I worked for Mediagenic, aka Activision and Infocom, uh, when I was 18, 19. Um, and it was only the the mediagenic one that I actually it was on one project the entire time, which you know horribly horribly was Pete Rose Pennant Fever, a, uh, a baseball game. I can't stand sports. Uh, two months, eight hours a day testing on that one. A lot of fun. But the other ones, um, the job very much was you go into the you know into the game tester bay. You're you're one of the quats, the uh, you know quality assurance testers. And uh, you go up to the pit boss, and your guy says, you're working on this today. If you were lucky, it was, you know, something fun, entertaining uh, that you enjoyed. If you weren't so lucky, you get, you know, a Mavis be Beacon teaches typing. Uh, or you get to do eight hours of uh, print shop uh, printer, print card test matrix. You know, big printout this thick of, of the different combinations of printers and cards and machines they would run on. Um, so, same thing at Snaps. I would go in and there'd be different 
games uh, for the day. There were some action games that they did. In fact, that w they were better known for their action games. Uh, they had an experimental game, which I don't think even ended up with a name or shipped, for the Amiga. We had a prototype Amiga, which uh, would eventually later become a Model 1000 prototype, which is called the Amiga at the time. And it was in a great big uh, sheet metal black uh, you know, experimenter's case with a you know, floppy, just kind of screwed into the front, at least, for the ones that I tried out. Uh, but I got to play the beginnings quite a bit, and there's some, I still have some, some interesting vivid memories from, uh, you know, the picture in my, in my brain of uh, what the room looks like, even though it was only done in text. From here, because we're closed. Yeah, I mean, there, I don't think there's been a good game company, uh, you know, yet, at least not yet, uh, unfortunately, that, you know, its ending is as... They get acquired by some larger company, and uh, the good stuff stops, stops happening. Um, Synapse got acquired by Broderbund, as I'd mentioned, and uh, they got the programmers. They got distribution rights for a few things. I can't think of any games that they actually continued on as a series or anything like that. Um, you look at, like, Sierra Online used to be my favorite game company, and they got acquired, I don't know, several times in a row, and I'm not sure what even exists there anymore, who owns them, some, some you know, media company I don't even know the name of. Um, my absolute favorite games of all time, of course, were the, uh, the Ultimate Games, Richard Garriott. Um, and, uh, yeah, he doesn't, you know, he, I, I literally played those games since I was 12, uh, you know, 1 through 10 over a 20-year span, and uh, he doesn't own the rights to those anymore. And EA, I believe the ones who do, they don't have any interest in continuing it. So there is an entire story arc um, that is, uh, you know, continued over 20 years that I can't play anymore. Um, I, you know, for people who know me from the computer security field, uh, my handle is Blue Boar. And I love those. Um... There, there's the term now I hear bandied about, and I think it's a JWZ-ism, is the brand necrophilia. Right? Mm -hmm. I bought, my kids love it, I, I bought the $20 Commodore 64 joystick, which uh, part of the Commodore brand. I think they've got Commodore MP3 players now. They're coming out with an Amiga branded something. All, you know, nothing to do with the original products, nothing to do with the designers or compatibility or the same, uh, you know, line of family and all like that. Just, they're just reusing the brand. Um, so, um, 